Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Even when you're chilling on a tropical island, there's always things to be done. <laughs> things to clean, there's always food to be cooked, hey. people to be waited on. Oh, all communities have important jobs that need doing, you know, like hammock testing. And the ocean world is no different. Corals are the cities of the reef, thriving, busy, buzzing places where our fishy friends live, eat and hang out. From ocean public transport to cleaning to building or even waste disposal, everyone has a job to do. I wonder if they have presenter fish. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me. Come on, get your CV ready. Okay. It's coral career time. <laughs> Cleaning, cleaning. Any fish want some cleaning? Teeth or body polish, sir? Meet the cute cleaner shrimp. He's doing his little cleaning dance to let his fishy clients know he's looking for work. What is it with these shrimps and cleaning? They're obsessed. Well, there are loads of different kinds of cleaner shrimps, but they all do the same job. Cleaning nasty parasites or dead scales off all kinds of fish. Ah, oh, what, like a shrimp car wash? Mm, thanks for the gob polish, shrimpy. Sea stars, triggerfish, coral, sea cucumbers, anemones, even the doggy puffer. Oh, your ears are filthy. Thank you. They all call into the shrimp cleaning station. Hang on, you're telling me these little shrimps get right up close and sometimes even inside these big scary animals? What, and they never get eaten? No, well, you wouldn't try and bite your dentist, would you? This little shrimp is a welcome visitor and sea creatures happily let him crawl, clean and scrub as it stops them getting ill. He has access all areas and he's not fussy. He'll clean anyone's teeth. Our shrimp is like an on-call cleaning service for whoever needs a thorough scrub. Room service. Hey, how you doing? Come on in. Job vacant. Dentist or beautician for a variety of fish clients. Must have some family background in the cleaning business. Successful African cleaner shrimp. So, who's our next wondrous worker? <laughs> oh, well, they're happy little chappies. Who are they? Meet the cleaner ass dancing around in the reef, letting their customers know they're ready for work. They may look like ordinary little fish, but without these guys, the reef wouldn't be a very happy place. What do you mean? Well, as we all know, the reef is a pretty and cheery place most of the time, with fish going about their daily business. But, like all communities, it does have a dark side. <laughs> Wowzers, well, where's the happiness gone, Jem? With the naphid isopods. Dun, dun, dun. The what? Naphid isopods, otherwise known as deadly parasites. They swarm around the coral looking for healthy fish blood. Really? Well, where are they? I can't see any deadly animals. Well, they're almost invisible. But put a super duper mega microscope on them and they look something like this. Oh dear, that's a bit scary. Enter the superhero Ras. They nibble the nasty isopods from their fishy client scales, leaving them nice and germ-free to carry on until the next evil parasite attack. OK, so basically the Ras are the good guys, fighting the enemy isopods. Yep, and they don't hang about. Your average Ras can eat more than 1,000 isopods a day. Wow, that's a lot of parasites. And they can clean over 2,000 fish a day. Wow, that's a lot of cleaning appointments. <laughs> they have all kinds of clients stopping by. The gobby cods. Do you mind? I'm being clean now. The toothy triggerfish, the mad moray yeah. eel, the angelic angelfish, and even the colour-changing cuttlefish. So, without these fishy hard workers, there would be some very unhappy fish wandering around the reef. Job vacant. Fish doctor, a.k.a. evil parasite slayer. Must be very brave and have a massive appetite. Successful applicant, the cleaner ass. Like the cleaner shrimp, the rat's on-call scrubbing keeps the reef fish clean and healthy. 
So, we've had our shrimp dentists and Dr Rass, but surely they can't look after the whole health of the reef on their own. They're tiny. <laughs> That's a good point, Jen. And of course, that's where super cleaning stations come in, which is exactly where this sunfish is heading. More cleaning stations? Yeah, see, these are like reef car washes, but instead of big fluffy brushes, they have zillions of little fish that gather around to clean big guys like the sunfish here. The sunfish's skin is seven and a half centimeters thick. So that basically means that if our skin was as thick as this biscuit, a sunfish's skin would be as thick as two cheeseburgers. Wow. It would take a whole team of Dr. Cleaner asses just to clean his huge head. Duh. So others get involved too, like these butterfly fish here. Oh, you're filthy. Tell you what, you start on his head, Eric, and I'll do his arm. <laughs> so they're a bit like nurses following the sunfish around to keep him constantly clean. Yeah, thanks. Whoa, are those the evil parasites? Yeah, this geezer is covered in parasites. So many parasites, even the parasites have parasites. So this is where the sunfish and his cleaning station comes into play. Our butterfly fish invites other fishy colleagues to help to slay the evil parasite, like these angelfish. And of course, although the butterfly fish might be keeping the sunfish free from horrible parasite sickness, I'm guessing they're also getting a good mosh up as well. Oh yes, they say there's no such thing as a free lunch. It's true, these fish work pretty hard cleaning up these nasty bloodsuckers. Job vacant, cleaning nurses, employer, sunfish. Successful applicant, the butterfly fish. The nurse butterfly fish team are linked to Dr. Rass because they both clean up evil parasites. <laughs> From the hard-working butterfly nurses to freeloaders extraordinaire, meet the spoilt brats of the reef, the remoras. Mmm, look like the other I do. Remora fish hang out with the big boys of the reef, like the magnificent manta here. They don't really care about the manta. All they're after is a free ride, a free meal and free protection. And they choose any big fish they can hitch a ride with. What, so they're complete slackers? Yep, they're hangers on. What, you mean they won't leave the big fish alone? No, I literally mean they hang on. They have these Velcro-like pads on the top of their head that hook onto the big fish. That's amazing. Imagine if we could do that. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if I was late for the bus. And they're not daft, these Remora freeloaders. They attach themselves near to the mega mouths of mantas and sharks so they can snaffle up any dropped scraps of food. Well, I guess all societies have their lazy freeloaders, always after something for nothing, and the reef is no different. <laughs> Wanted, slacker. Specialist skills, not really. Position filled by the remora. So the remoras attach like Velcro to big fish for a free ride. And butterfly fish follow big fish around to munch on their tasty but evil parasites. And they're connected because they both hang around with massive fish. But at least the butterfly fish works for his supper. <laughs> Up on board the Sea Cucumber Express. Well, put your foot down, mate. Duh. It's not the speediest bus in the world, is it? Oh, I bet it's fast if you're a shrimp, though. Uh, I'm not convinced. However, a free ride is better than no ride at all. And our little imperial shrimp hitches a ride on all kinds of sea cucumbers. Uh, it just looks like he's having a good old nosh-up to me. No. Oh. Well, he is. The sea cucumber happily carries him along and he nibbles en route. So, they get a good deal from the sea cucumber. They get to nibble, poke around and have a free ride. Yeah, he's a pretty good transportation system, eh? Even though the shrimp has eight legs, they can't walk that far. And frankly, why bother when you can get a free lift? And sea cucumbers taste disgusting. Help! Help me! Help! So, Shrimpy here can chill out knowing he's safe from predators. A bit like travelling first class. With a bodyguard. Wow! And some shrimps prefer to travel in style on the nudibranch bus, even if they have to hang on a bit tighter. Searching for a bus driver for the Imperial Shrimp Bus Run. Successful applicant, the sea cucumber. The remoras travel at speed, hooked onto their ride, while the Imperial Shrimp chooses the slow but reliable sea cucumber as their chauffeur-driven limo. So the remoras and shrimp are linked together because they both hitch free rides. So, who's our next watery workaholic? <laughs> It's another shrimp cleaning up. Seriously, mate, get a life. Don't shout at the shrimp or you may have to deal with the scary goby. If you're not from the burrow, you're not coming in. 
These gobies are shrimp bodyguards. They live together with the shrimp, and while the shrimp tidies and builds the burrow, the goby keeps watch. They take their work very seriously, don't they? Oh, yes. These gobies are not to be messed with. Are you looking at me? And they're in constant contact with their shrimpy buddies. The shrimp keeps its antennae touching the body of the goby, who flicks the shrimp with its tail when it's alarmed. Hey! Then they both scarper into the burrow and they're safe as houses. Position, bodyguard. Must have a seriously scary stare. Position filled by the goby. So, like the imperial shrimp sea cucumber, who keeps his passengers safe by tasting oh. fowl, the goby looks after his shrimp by guarding the burrow. Cool! Another ocean bodyguard. Well, what an impressive workforce. Let's take a look at our successful applicants so far. From tooth cleaning shrimps to toothy bodyguards, no talents are wasted here. Tinkerbell cleaner shrimp is welcome at the homes of many fishy friends for a regular dental check. Say ah, thank you. And when those evil parasites get out of hand, it's time for a house call from Dr. Rass. But if you're as big as the sunfish, you need a whole team of cleaner nurses, like our attentive butterfly fish. They're good little workers, unlike our freeloader, Remoras. They stick on for dear life so they can feed and travel for free. Talking of free rides, our shrimp travels first class on the Sea Cucumber Express. All aboard! The cucumber acts like a free bodyguard, just like the goby who protects his little shrimp. They're highly skilled, this ocean lot. All right, who's next? <laughs> Robbery in progress. 1040, do you have a description? Suspect was last seen leaving the rear entrance. All units in the downtown core, please respond to a possible hostage situation. Copy that. Ocean security alert. Now, this is one security system I would not mess with. Sharks are like security guards of the reef. They patrol their area, and it's not advisable to get too close. But why do they need to patrol their sharks? Surely no one messes with them. They're patrolling for dinner. Mm. By swimming backwards and forwards, they spot any passing snack, like this little fella here. He used to be a big red fish. Hey! <laughs> Yet for Mr Shark and his marching army, it's all about serving themselves. Well, they're sharks. They're not exactly renowned for their kindness, are they? <laughs> Definitely not. They eat the big fish that would normally eat the little fish. So, in a roundabout way, they actually protect the little fish from getting munched. Wow! Ooh, lucky for Diddy Fish, not so lucky for the Trevally. Job vacant. Ocean security. Successful applicants. Sharks, sharks, and sharks. So, like the goby who guard their shrimp, the sharks patrol the outskirts of the reef knowing that's the best way to get a good meal. Get too close, though, and you'll be head by Meet the gardening damselfish. Hola, ¿qué tal? They're very green-fingered, or should I say, green-finned. I can hear you. <clears throat> Apologies. These hard-working little guys find a patch of spare coral and grow their very own algae garden. Hey, amigos. Uh, it's not my idea of a pretty garden, but they seem quite proud of it. Ah, yes, and proud is putting it mildly. These gardens are not for public use, and the damselfish will defend it at all costs. Boy, get off my lawn. Yeah. They spend their whole day patrolling their patch, aggressively chasing off larger fish. Uh-oh. Oh, you're stinky. Wow, pretty fearless for a fish. They're like fishy guard dogs. Funny you should say that, because they can also make popping and thumping sounds as a warning sign to say, keep off my lawn, like a dog does, you know, barking at the postman. What's the problem? They'll even carry away bits of diving equipment if divers are daft enough to leave it near the damselfish's precious garden. OK, well, I won't be leaving my expensive underwater camera on a damselfish patch again. That's for certain. Wanted, very, very hard-working gardener with a nasty temper. <laughs> Successful applicant, the damselfish. So, our daring damselfish are great gardeners, but keep off their lawns or you'll be in trouble. Which links them to our patrolling shark security system. Enter at your own peril. <laughs> Seal 
is it a dolphin? Uh, is that a swimming cow? What are we looking at exactly? Let me introduce the dugong, otherwise known as the sea cow. Sea cow? Pull the other one. Although they are more closely related to elephants. I'm confused. Actually, he's neither a cow nor an elephant, but he is a mammal and he has a huge appetite. He looks like a friendly fella, although he does have a bit of a honker on him. Well, they are friendly, if a little slow and lumbering. Hi there, I'm Doug the Dugong, and I like to eat seagrass. They feed on seagrass like it's going out of fashion. In fact, they don't just feed, they practically mow the ocean floor. Oh, I get it. So if our bolshy damselfish are the gardeners of the reef, then this gluttonous geezer is lawnmower man. Yep. That horseshoe-shaped disc at the end of their snout acts as a raker and chewer, so the dugong kind of rakes and chews his food as he moves along the seagrass. I can see why he's called the sea cow now. He looks like a cow and he eats like a cow. A jar of bacon, see? A lawnmower man. Qualification, love of grouse, and a big hoof face. Successful applicant, Deputy Dugong. They certainly love their lawns, just like the damselfish. Yeah, but the damselfish does a much better job of looking after his. Ah, oh, look at this little shrimp. How cute is he? He's called the Harlequin Shrimp, but I call him Jeff the Court Jester Shrimp, with his funny outfit and body shape. Aw, and he's playing with the starfish. Um, I don't think he's playing, Jem. He's actually eating the starfish. No, don't be ridiculous. A shrimp can't eat a starfish. I mean, look how big it is. Ah, you see, now it's your turn to learn not to judge by appearances. Mr Cutie Pie Shrimp here is a complete starfish killer. Ooh, hasn't he bitten off a bit more than he can chew? Quite literally. No, he can handle this starfish, even though it's three times his size. Their little pink armoured legs are like sharp scissors or needles designed to unpick the starfish. It's a bit like unpicking thread or wool. Whoa, look at him go. He really has that down to a fine art. I'm beginning to feel sorry for the starfish. I mean, to be eaten is bad enough, but to be eaten by something three times smaller than you is practically humiliating. I know. It would be like me eating a small cow on my own. He obviously can't eat the starfish all at once, so he has a little trick up his sleeve that will help his lunch stay fresh for longer. Go on. Well, he doesn't kill the sea star. He just nibbles at it so it stays alive, sometimes for weeks. Oh, man! He's eating him while the dude is still alive. That is gross. Although, look, the starfish doesn't seem too bothered by the fact that the shrimp is unpicking him. Job vacant, fearless hunter. We're looking for somebody who looks sweet and innocent but is a killer in shrimp's clothing. <gasps> Successful applicant, Harlequin Shrimp. Well, nothing like a fresh seafood meal uh, for weeks on end. The Harlequin Shrimp. Or gross shrimp. Hunts down something three times its size, so he is linked to the fearless damselfish. Both are much tougher than they look. <laughs> Move out of our way, if you want to keep your fingers. Give us a smile, mate. Huh? Ooh, I think his teeth could do with a visit from the cleaner shrimp. You wouldn't mess with him, though, would you? These are the bumphead parrotfish. I agree, they all look like they've banged their heads very hard. But why are they called parrotfish? Well, they have a parrot-like beak that can chomp through anything, including corals. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whoa, chomp and go. Is that the work of our gang of parrotfishes? Yep, they arrive in a gang, eat big chunks of coral... Poor coral. ...and leave. How impolite. They're like a greedy reef mafia. They come, take chunks of coral without asking, demolishing lives and surroundings, and then move on. Oops. I suppose even the underwater world has to have bad jobs. When you're the size of half a human, with extra large teeth and travel around with your buddies, it's easier to be a thief <laughs> than earn a decent living like the cleaner shrimp. They do poo sand, though, so pinching coral has its punishment. <laughs> Wanted! Bump-head parrotfish. Have you seen these teeth? Call PC Puffer at the Reef Police. Hello, hello, hello. Like the hunter, harlequin shrimp are offering parrotfish steal their food instead of earning an honest crust. Nobody lazes about in the barrier reef. 
unlike someone I know. Let's get another reef cap of our ocean career so far. All security, and then swim away very fast. The shark security guard is someone I would not argue with. <laughs> As ever with the sharks, it's all about them. At least when the daring damselfish patrols, he's defending his algae garden. He has green fingers, but the suction nose dugong has to be the best mower in the ocean. Talking of mowers, the harlequin shrimp harvests and eats his food while it's still alive. Ew! <laughs> And pretty bad manners, if you ask me, just like the parrotfish. They're food thieves, they arrive, they chomp and they go, leaving half-eaten homes. Next applicant, please. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I think I'll put this rock here, and this rock looks much better here. <laughs> uh, why are these fish just randomly moving rocks around? Meet the fish version of Bob the Builder, or Builders, the rock-moving rat. Uh, I'm sensing a clue in that title. Yep, these guys are the builders or construction workers on the reef. And boy, do they work hard. Builder fish. Cool. Um, why? Well, they work in pairs and they move rocks for two reasons, really. They choose their space and then start to build their home. But while they're doing it, they're also looking out for any tasty snacks. Hello! While one fish shifts the rock, the other grabs the food and eats it. Yeah, but am I missing something? I mean, they're fish. How do they pick rocks up? While they push it with their snout and pick up with their mouth. Those are enormous rocks he's moving. I'm impressed. Yeah, it might be like you lifting a whole car on your own with your <laughs> mouth. Whoa, even Bob the Builder can't do that. And they're also great landscapers. They can rearrange any area to suit them, thanks to their strong teeth, which means they can build homes anywhere. Yo, Malcolm, come and have a look at my rock structure. Do you want an upstairs on this one? How many stories are we building today? Searching for home builders with super strong mouths. Successful applicant, the Rock Mover Rass. <laughs> So, like the bumphead parrotfish, the rock mover wrasse have super strong jaws and rearrange the reef to suit them. <laughs> the tiger shark. Sleek, cool, streamlined, fierce, and the ultimate ocean garbage man. Surely the ultimate ocean hunter? Oh, yes, for sure, sister. But for this greedy guts, the fun is not in the hunting, but the clearing up. He's a one shark waste disposal unit. In other words, he will eat absolutely anything. Yikes, I'm out of here. He certainly got the gnashes for it. Yep, yeah, his teeth are highly specialised to slice through flesh and bone, which makes him the perfect candidate for ocean dustmen. They found all sorts in this garbage guts license plates, tyres, Bottles, tin cans, tennis shoes, plastic bags, um, human head. Human head? What? Yep, you name it, it's been found in a tiger shark's belly. This geezer has pretty filthy eating habits. They call him the garbage man of the sea because he'll eat anything. Mm, so I see. What's that? That is a rotting, stinking turtle, to be precise. But he loves it. I mean, who else in the ocean has the jaws to crunch through a turtle shell? Not everyone's idea of a good nosh-up, but like many sharks, this fella is essential for keeping the ocean rubbish free. Can you imagine how much rubbish and rotting waste there would be floating around without this garbage guts? Job vacant, waste disposal. Fussy eaters need not apply. Successful applicant, the tiger shark. So, while the rock mover Rass cleans and rearranges the seafloor, the tiger shark takes care of any floating garbage. It's the crab dance. Uh, now he seems to be invisible juggling. Uh, time for a scratch or two. Or a hike across the anemone in gale force winds. Help! Does this crab ever stop? And why isn't he getting stung by the anemone? I thought that was where the clownfish hang out. Ah! Well, this cute little guy is a porcelain crab. Hello! He lives in the anemone. He gets instant protection, but he needs to be immune to its sting. 
So, what's his job? I mean, he looks busy, but I'm not sure what at. Well, these little critters help to keep things clean, including the anemone. What you thought was dancing is them filtering the water, taking all the debris out and noshing at the same time. Not again. He'll get indigestion. Do all ocean animals eat while they work? <laughs> Pretty much. It's the reef version of a salary. They're not going to clean for nothing, and the porcelain crab is no different. He uses the feathery hairs around his mouth to comb through the water and clear up waste particles, but he also scavenges around on the sea floor. A uh, job vacant, ocean street sweeper. Comfortable staying free housing and an enemy comes with the job. Successful applicant, the porcelain crab. So they're a bit like ocean street sweepers then, clearing up any messy particles through their little feathery water combs. Yep. Like our waste disposal tiger shark, the busy porcelain crab clears up ocean debris. So both work hard to keep the reef nice and clean. Just like our first job hunter, the cleaner shrimp, who cleans and polishes his ocean colleagues. So there's no jobs going in the ocean then? <sighs> Apparently not. There's no need for presenter fish. No, nope, they're too busy cleaning or eating. Let's look back over our coral careerists. Our first vacancy was filled by the little cleaner shrimp. Like a cosmetic dentist, he polishes up many a fishy client. But for those hard-to-reach parasites, you need Dr Rass. His no-nonsense approach helped to keep his patients clean and minty fresh. And if you weigh a ton like the sunfish, then you need a whole team of nurses to scrub away the evil parasites. Or you can just freeload your way around like the lazy remora fish. Oh. <laughs> Their Velcro head patch gives them the perfect freebie ride. Like the Imperial Shrimp, who hops on board the Sea Cucumber Express. Oh. These shrimps get everywhere. Thanks to his bodyguard, Gobi, this shrimp has constant protection. Call Shark Security and Scoot. This security system is foolproof. Try and get past, get eaten. Speaking of security, the little damselfish is tougher than she looks. Keep off her lawn or else. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'll just stand over here. You could try stepping on the dugong's lawn, but be quick. With his hoof gob, he's the best mower in town. Also linked to the daring damselfish is our brave harlequin shrimp, the ultimate hunter. He can bring something down three times bigger than he is. Respect to the shrimps. Unlike the parrotfish, with teeth like that, you'd think they'd try a bit of hunting rather than just chomping off coral. Uh -huh. They're food thieves, leaving some poor coral dwellers homeless. For true building skills, look no further than the rock-moving brass, with their super-strong mouths that can carry rocks bigger than they are. And not forgetting our garbage guts, the tiger shark. He will eat even the stinkiest stuff in the ocean. Yuck! Not to mention our final applicant, the porcelain crab. He leaves the heavy stuff to the tiger shark, but likes to sweep up after the smaller, messy critters. Can you go back to work, please? I am working. I'm, uh, hammock testing. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah